So Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Oh my gosh. Ooh. We thank you for this holy week. We thank you, Lord, that as we remember what you did for us because you loved us so much, God, our hearts just go out, God, and just say thank you. Thank you for just who you are in all your glory, for unconditionally loving us and giving yourself for us on the cross so that we could be reconciled back to you. And so, God, we pray tonight over uh, the individuals, your women servants and your men servants who are going to share with us tonight. We pray over them right now, God, in advance. And we know, Lord, that you're going to be uh, using them, that they're going to be a blessing to the body of Christ tonight. And we just give praise, God, to you for choosing them and them accepting the call. And so we are just uh, in awe of you. And uh, in all of what you're going to do tonight already in advance, we're expecting, Lord, you to move in a mighty way. And we just give you praise and we give you honor and we give you all the glory in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. So the first speaker up tonight is uh, Deacon Rosetta. And then after Deacon Rosetta, Minister Smokes and then Minister Nakia Johnson. And so if you will just share with them and however the Lord leads you to pray or however, whatever you feel led to do, um, you go ahead and let him use you. So it's, the floor is yours, Rosetta. All righty. Good evening, everybody. You can hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. All right. Great. Well, I'm going to say a short prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord, and praise your name. I thank you, Father God, for what you have spoken to me, Lord God. Use me, Father God, this evening, Father. Speak to me and through me. Open the hearts to receive, Father God, what you say. In Jesus' name, amen. So I am excited. <laughs> I was so excited to get this particular saying. And one of the reasons is I had not paid too much attention to it, actually. I probably had read it, but kind of like read over it. So I really hadn't paid too much attention to um, this particular saying, um, which is daughters of Jerusalem do not weep for me. It was taken from uh, Luke 20, chapter 23, verse 28. So I was excited to um, study it and hear what um, God uh, wanted me to present tonight. So we're going to get into it. So Luke 23, chapter 23, I'm going to read verse 26 through 28 in the NIV version. Um, if you can, you can turn to that. Um, there'll be a, some times when I will read um, a scripture and have you uh, and wait for you to turn to it. But I'm going to read this one. As the soldiers led him away, they see Simon from Cyrene who was on his way in from the country and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. So the gospel of Luke is the only gospel to include this particular saying. And that's because the Gospel of Luke speaks of God's judgment on those who reject his Messiah. So beginning with Jesus' rejection in his hometown in chapter 4, verse 24, where it says, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Then near the end of Luke, Jesus foretells the destruction of Jerusalem in chapter 21, verses 5 through 36. Daughters of Jerusalem, the descendants. Ah, Jerusalem, the people here rejected the prophets in the past, and now they rejected Jesus. Who were these women? Were they unofficial disciples that believed in secret? Or were they just good religious folk that were extremely sad at the treatment being given to such an innocent man? One thing is clear though, they were of Jerusalem. 
the place that had rejected Jesus. And yet, Jesus, in the current pain and suffering he was already in, looked at them and delivered to them a message for them, drawing attention away from himself. But Jesus sees their tears, the tears of a sinful people that had rejected God. He was on his way to be the sacrifice for every last one of them. This text is saying some people will suffer the judgment of God in hell while crying for Jesus. Just because they wept at the side of the cross does not mean they are saved. We must not remember the suffering of Christ by weeping at the thought of his physical suffering, but that he did all of that for you. And you. And you. But I believe God wants me to focus not on the women this evening, but on the two words Jesus said for me. Jesus was on his way to death, as the people thought. They still didn't know who he was and that at any time he could have stopped the whole thing. Jesus was just saying, I'm OK. Don't cry for me. I've made up my mind. I've settled this thing. What you see happening in my heart. I want to do this. I'm in agreement with this. I don't need to be rescued from this. Save these tears for yourself and for your children. Jesus had made the decision to carry this through. But how did he get there? How did he get to that decision? He made this decision the last time, the third time he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. So we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 26, and I'll give everybody a few seconds to get there. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 46. Because we're going we're gonna to take this verse by verse to how Jesus got to that decision. I can't tell if everybody's there or not, so I'm going to give you a couple more seconds. So Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 36. I'm reading from the NIV. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with them. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. The Amplified reads, then he said to them, my soul is very sad and deeply grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow. His soul, his mind, his will, his emotions were overwhelmed so much. Jesus knows us. He really knows us. Jesus knows us when we're in sorrow. He's felt sorrow too almost to the point of death, he said. He knew the task before him, what the father, his father, your father now, if you're a believer, a believer, and mine too. He knew what he was asking him to do. So reading on, Jesus said, stay here and keep watch with me. Verse 39. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground in reverence to God and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Another translation says, Going a little ahead, he fell on his face praying, My father, if there is any way, get me out of this. 
but please, not what I want. You, what do you want? His spirit was willing, but his flesh was weak. Verse 40, then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus still teaching while he himself was in the middle of what he had just told them. He told them to do exactly what he was doing, praying so he wouldn't fall into temptation. How many times do you go through something and you're trying to teach someone the lesson that you're learning yourself? So continuing on in verse 42, he went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. This prayer was a little different this time. Jesus' mind was being changed. His flesh was more in the background as the spirit was taking charge and his mind was following. We've all heard the saying, prayer changes things. Verse 43, when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more. Why did he have to go back third time to pray? Did he need some kind of confirmation of what he had heard the father the second time? He never needed this before. What made this time any different? God was having him do something with his own body this time. The other days when he prayed to the father, it was for direction, but he himself wasn't the sacrifice those times. John noted another time when Jesus said his soul was troubled in John 12, verse 27 to 28. The NIV reads, now my soul is troubled and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. These scriptures were written to show Jesus' humanity, that he does identify with us. Sometimes we tend not to go to Jesus because of the lies being whispered to us that he wouldn't understand, that he doesn't know how we feel. But we need to strike the head. We need to rebuke those lies, refuse to believe them. The scripture says in Hebrews 4.15, what a massive comfort to know that we have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses and one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus knows what it's like to live as a human. He got hungry. He got thirsty. He slept. He had to learn things. He grew. He loved. He was glad. He was angry. He was troubled at times. He prayed. He exercised faith. He read the scriptures. He hurt when he saw another person's illness. He cried when he saw death. Jesus knows our every weakness. Yes, Jesus knows. Yes, he's our friend. Just like that old hymn that says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. It's a great comfort to know we have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses and one who in every respect has been tempted as we, yet without sin. Yes, Jesus knows. Jesus can identify with your sorrows, your anguish, your pain, your emotions. He was human with all the things that come with being a human being. 
Now, I want you to write this scripture down. I hope you've written all the other ones, but write down 2 John chapter 1, verse 7 through 9. That's 2 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Now I'm reading the Message Bible translation here. It says, there are a lot of smooth talking con artists loose in the world who refuse to believe that Jesus was truly human, a flesh and blood human being. Give them their true title, deceiver, antichrist, and be very careful around them so that you don't lose out on what we worked so diligently in together. I want you to get every reward you have coming to you. Anyone who gets so progressive in his thinking that he walks out on the teaching of Christ walks out on God. But whoever stays with the teaching stays faithful to both the Father and the Son. So we're going to go back to Matthew 26. We can continue with verse 44. Jesus says, so, okay, so it says, so he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Let me ask you a question. When you are praying about a certain thing or situation, how often do you think you need to pray or say something different each time you pray? That you have to phrase it differently. This verse says that Jesus himself prayed the same thing the third time that he prayed the second time. The, relationship with your people. The, the difference this time, though, when he got up the third time from praying, it was a go. His mind was made up. No wavering, just solid, fixed, set in stone what he, Jesus, was about to do. He said, okay, Father, let us do this thing. Let us finish this plan. Just like God said in the beginning in Genesis, let us make man in our own image. All three were there, but he, God, did the work. At the cross, all three were there, but Jesus did the work. And now all three are certainly here, but the Holy Spirit is doing the work through us. You see, Jesus sent him, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26 says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. John 16, verse 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So back to Matthew 26 again. We're in verse 45. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Who on here tonight is still sleeping, resting? Who is still weeping at the cross? Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour except the Father. There are so many more souls that need to be reached. Many haven't heard the salvation message. Many have heard, but have been duped into false teaching. Many have heard and are following a religion. Many have heard and are following their pastor, bishop, apostle, evangelist, and not the only one that can save Jesus. 
Y'all remember that Super Bowl commercial this year? He gets us. When no one else does, he does. He gets us. He made that decision to die for you. Will you wake up tonight? Will you stop resting? Will you stop crying at the cross? Today is the day. Today is your day. You are not on here by accident. Will you pray and have a made up mind like Jesus did? Praise the Lord. That's wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Praise God. Praise God. That was so powerful. That Praise was so powerful. Him. Praise him. Praise God. Yes. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Mm. Amen. We're going to look at three dimensions. To God be the glory. All right. All right. So, bro, smokes. I got to go behind that. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Thank you, Minister. Deacon Rosetta. <clears throat> um, I'm going to do a quick prayer and I'm going to get right into it. Father God, we just thank you right now, God, for just allowing us to be here today, God. Father, we just thank you right now just for the, everyone that's on here on tonight, God, that, Father, that they hear a word from you, God, that it, I will remove myself, God, that, Father, that everything that's spoken on tonight, God, will come strictly from you. I thank you. I give you praise and give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> I would like to start off by saying um, our pastors, you know, they are such amazing people. They love to... Um, Put us in the spotlight. Um, um, Pastor D and Pastor V, uh, you know, they always like to keep us on our toes. Um, and for that, you know, I, I said thank you for amazing leaders. Um, but I was given the scripture, Luke 23 and 34. I'll give everybody a few minutes to get there. Um, and I'm a cross reference with. Uh, Reading Luke 23, 32 through 43, as well as Matthew 6 and 23. Um, you all know I don't like to keep people long, but I'm going to get into it right now. Uh, just by looking at everybody, it seems like everyone is almost there, already there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead with it. Um, Luke 23 and 34. Truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. I want to start off by saying I do not know about you but god just stated here in luke 23 and 34 truly i tell you today you will be with me in paradise see i want to take you back in time to tell you how we got to this verse see luke 23 32 and 43 it says there were two others both criminals were led out to be executed with jesus when they came to a place called the skull they nailed jesus to the cross and the criminals were also crucified, one to his right and one to his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for their clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leader scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he is really God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him, too, by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words. This is the king of Jews. In verse 39, one of those criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you... No, don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. In verse 43, and Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. See, this is the time where Jesus is up on the cross and in so much pain. He has one criminal on his left side who doesn't believe he is the Messiah and the other criminal on his right side saying, Lord, I pray you remember me when you take over your kingdom. 
These are two different individuals who obviously have different backgrounds. See, Jesus didn't even have a response for the man that said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. He didn't need to prove anything to man. I wonder what was going through the mind of both criminals when they both didn't have the same mindset of who Jesus really was. Any type of movement that Jesus made on the cross caused him more pain than ever. At this point in time, he is tied to the cross with nails in his hands and feet. Yet he is still showing love and compassion by asking God to forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. See, one of, see, one of the two criminals knew who Jesus truly was. He knew that they were guilty and deserved to die for their wrongdoings. He knew Jesus didn't do anything and didn't deserve what was about to happen to him. The other criminal was sitting there blaspheming God. When I think of the word blaspheming, I think of rude and profane talk. See, today we're living in a world where everything we say and do is being criticized by people of this world. It has gotten so bad, recordings and screenshots has become all we need to crucify a person nowadays. If they make the wrong face of expression that we don't agree with, they must be crucified. See, today we live in a world where everyone is so freely out to expose everyone around them except for their own dirty laundry. Yes, I said it. See, that's what Jesus said in Luke 23 and 34. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they are doing. See, some people read that verse truly. I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise and begin to say, Lord, I can't wait to envision paradise with you. I'm here to tell you, you should be already envisioning paradise here on earth right now. Amen. The book of Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. See, the message verse says, steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provision. Don't worry about missing out. You will find all your everyday human concerns will be met. So when you wake up in the morning, you should at, you should be asking God, I want to see what paradise looks like. No, God, I want to feel what paradise looks like. No, God, I want to experience paradise here on earth. I don't want to wait until the, my afterlife. You said in your word, if I seek you first above all else and live righteously, you will give me everything. So stop asking for things that has already been given to you. Stop asking for things that have already been given to you. The doors have been open way before you even asked for them. I'm going to say it again. The doors has already been open way before you even asked for them. I know some of you are wondering, Minister Smokes, why are you envisioning paradise here on earth? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad to tell you. When I woke up this morning, I didn't have to worry about what I was going to eat or what I was going to wear or how I was going to pay bills or how I was going to get to this job some people call work, how I was going to take my meds. I didn't have to worry about anything because I know the God I serve and everything I need and want has already been answered because I 100% have access to the kingdom of God. I'm going to say it again. I, Joseph Smokes, have 100% access to the kingdom of God. So are you. See, we need to be more selfless like Jesus Christ. I said the word selfless like Jesus Christ, who was on the cross. He was more concerned about the men's souls around him than the pain he was enduring. See, Deacon Rosetta, she said it earlier about the selfless attitude that Jesus shown when he knew he was about to be killed in Luke 28. He said, daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. Stop asking the Lord for things he has already given to you. Trust him in his word and let him move through your life like never before. Amen. Woo! I wanted some more of that smoke. I wanted some more of that smoke. Go Ooh, better preach. <laughs> wow. To God be the glory. Man, that was powerful. Nice that was powerful. Thing. Ain't nothing like the kingdom. I'm telling you what's the truth. <laughs> Oh man, thank you so much for letting the Lord use you, bro. Smoke that was that was powerful. Amen. 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 All right, Nakia Johnson, Minister Nakia. Amen. 
To God be the glory. I think you muted yourself, Nakia. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into my saying. Um, but I want to say a short prayer before I go into um, what the Lord has given me. Um, dear Heavenly Father and precious Lord, Father God, I just thank you right now, Father God, for this revival. I thank you for those who are here, Father God, to hear a word from you. Father God, I pray that they be not just hearers of your word, but take this word, Father God, that it may be a nourishment to their soul. Father God, I thank you for just using me, Father God, to share your word and what you have given me. And Father God, I just give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name, I do pray. Amen. All right. So... Um, the saying I have is found in the book of Mark 15, 34 and Matthew 27, 45 and 46, but I'll be reading, um, Matthew 27, 45 and 46 amplified version. And it reads now from the sixth hour noon, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, which is three o'clock hour time, three o'clock PM. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud agonized voice. Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. That is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which he spoke in Hebrew. I believe that most of us here today know the tragic but triumphant story about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. It didn't just start here in the New Testament. It was predicted over 600 to 1,000 years before Jesus was even born. Jesus' death and resurrection was prophesied in the Old Testament. And yet he quoted the same words in Psalms 22 and 1, Amplified. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my growing, groaning? In other translations, they use words such as abandoned or deserted. Here in this scripture, King David gave an amazing, accurate description of the suffering the Messiah would endure hundreds of years later. Have you ever felt so alone as if no one cared? I'm pretty sure that at some point in our lives, we experience being abandoned, deserted, and even forsaken. Jesus was human, just like you and me. In the scripture, we learn that in chapter 26, verses 1 and 2, that Jesus understood his assignment, or in other words, what his purpose was. The scripture reads, when Jesus had finished his discourse, which is a formal extended teaching about important matters, he said to his disciples, you know that the Passover is coming in two days and the son of man is to be betrayed and handed over to for crucifixion. So what was Jesus' assignment? Glad you asked. In 1 John 2 and 2, Amplified, it says, and he, that same Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins, the atoning sacrifice that holds back the wrath of God that would otherwise be directed at us because of our sinful nature, our worldliness, our lifestyle, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of all believers throughout the whole world. 
His assignment was to be the propitiation, the ultimate sacrifice, the lamb that was slaughtered for the sins of the entire world. I can't even imagine the feeling Jesus must have felt when at the ninth hour, when darkness came over all the land, he knew at that very moment what was about to happen. He knew that there was going to be a separation taking place between him and his father. When I look up the word, when I looked up the word separation, it says the act of process of severing or separating the state or condition of being severed or separated as in the ending of a relationship. Because Jesus took on the sins of the entire world, God had to separate himself from his own son temporarily for just a brief moment. This separation was what he had dreaded as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, as Deacon Rosetta mentioned earlier in Matthew 26, 36 through 39. I know you heard it, but I'm going to read it again. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he told his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking him, Peter, and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, he began to grieve and great in great distress. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow. Stay here and stay awake and keep watch with me. And after going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed saying, my father, if it is possible, that is consistent with your will, let this cup pass me, pass from me, yet not as, as I will, but as you will. Not because of anything Jesus did, it was for one reason only. And that reason was us. The physical agony Jesus dealt with was horrible, but it was the spiritual alienation from his father that was the ultimate torture. In Isaiah 53, two through six, and I'm gonna read portion of the message um, translation. It said, we looked down on him, thought he was scum. But the fact is, it was our pains he carried, our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us. We thought he brought it on himself, that God was punishing him for his own failures. But it was our sins that did that to him that ripped and tore and crushed him, our sins. He took the punishment and that made us whole. Through his bruising, we get healed. We're all like sheep who wandered off and gotten lost. We've all done our own thing, gone our own way. And God has piled our sins everything we've done wrong on him. Separation for anyone is hard. For example, when a husband and a wife are separated or when a child is separated from their parents and even when families become separated, to name a few. How many of you dealt with the pain of separation in your own lives. I've experienced the pain of separation separation in my family. I remember that in July of 2010, my husband and son boarded a plane for Florida. 
so that my son would have an opportunity to be recruited in order to play college football. During the first month of them being gone, I felt alone. I felt abandoned. I felt deserted because they were no longer here. The pain I felt was agonizing. I would cry every night in my pillow so that my daughter couldn't hear me. The silence was piercing. I have never been separated from my husband, let alone my child before. So I felt like a physical death had occurred, even though I could pick up the phone and talk with them. But it wasn't the same. So in closing, Jesus knew that he would temporarily, temporarily be separated from God for the moment from the moment he took upon himself the sins of the world. But Jesus suffered a double death so that we would never have to experience eternal separation from God, our Father. Amen. Ooh, wow. Amen. 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 Some powerful word. That was a powerful word as well. I, I tell you what's the truth. That's just, I, I'm, I'm speechless right now um, because you guys have allowed the Lord to use you tonight and bless us. Um, so I'm going to open the floor so that uh, those who've been hearing you tonight can share how it blessed them because it's truly been amazing. Truly been amazing. Anybody want to share? Minister Robin, I see your hand. Go ahead. Good evening, everybody. I just wanted to say to my ministers, my brothers and sisters, y'all preached a powerful word that made you think and it actually took you to the place of each scripture to show you the meaning. And I just thank God for allowing God for you allowing God to use you. What a powerful way to start this revival off. And I thought about what revival means is to revive your soul and spirit. And that's what was happening on this night. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. Anybody else before we start closing down? I tell you, I, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night now. <laughs> Y'all have definitely kicked it off to a great start. So um, and thank you so much for joining us, Mother Smokes. Thank you. I enjoyed it. I, I, I thank God for, I think it was Sister Rosetta said that how we need to have a selfless attitude. You know, I, I just thank God for that because there's so many times that, you know, we look upon people and do things and, you know, that attitude is not right or whatever. But I, I thank God for all of them. I thank God for my son, Joseph. Every time I hear him, I just get chills, you know, because, you know, I raised that little boy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and just the night his sister and his daddy was able to hear him, too. Hello. So I thank God Hello. for it and everything. He called us, Mama, Mama, you going to get on? I've been out of work for two weeks sick, but I thank God, you know, he's blessing me. Thank and everything and i'm feeling so much better but I, I thank god for any time that i can just you know come on and listen to the word and everything and not have to you know worry about you know what you're gonna hear you're gonna hear something good and i thank god and it comes from the lord and thank we thank y'all so much so amen. much amen. but just keep us keeping him and his family <laughs> amen. I, th I think we're gonna see y'all very soon i promise all right all right okay. it's god thank you so much thank you so much anybody else all right. Damn. Thank God. All I can say, God, thank you. If there's not a connection on this phone line tonight, it's a connection. I'm telling you, it's powerful. And Miss Nikhil, <laughs> it's like she was writing what God has given me for tomorrow night. <laughs> I said, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm telling you, it was awesome. It's powerful. Amen. It's if you want to check yourself, mm -hmm. Amen. because the thing that Jesus endured, I know if I had got one strike without that whip, that mm -hmm. match, I'd be through. So mm -hmm. you know, thank God that He did it for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. And about uh, He was telling the the dollars of Zion about don't weep, 
he had told me that before because when I first got saved and I started reading Matthew and I started crying, he said, don't cry for me. He said, I did it for you. Mm -hmm. Every time I was reading, I was crying. So he, when I heard him tell me that, I stopped crying. Mm -hmm. But I still felt, you know, felt saddened, but he did it for us. Amen. And I think a powerful Amen. word. Amen. 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 Awesome. Amen. Yes, it was amazing work. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Janet. Phyllis, thank you so much. Hey, <laughs> did y'all have anything you wanted to share? Amen. Oh, we can't hear you. You're muted. Yeah, you're muted. We can't hear you. Okay. Go ahead, Mom. Nice. I think all the beautiful words have been said. Amen. Amen. Well, we welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Of course. Um, Thank you for having us. Yes. Anytime. Anytime. Um, Kayla's on here tonight. Thank you so much for joining. So listen, tomorrow night, you guys come back um, at seven o'clock. We have three more amazing speakers. That are going to share. And uh, of course, Friday night, we'll close out with three more amazing speakers. And so we're just excited to hear what the Lord is going to speak through you. So invite somebody to come in and listen. And uh, we just want to just offer, if there's someone on here tonight who does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we don't offer religion at the harvest. That's not what we're about. But we talk about relationship because that's what God wants is a relationship you know, with you. So if you don't have a relationship with him, the Bible plainly lets us know that he died on the cross for us. And if you believe, if you confess and believe him, uh, believe in what he did on the cross, that you shall be saved. And so tonight, I'm just going to just say a short salvation prayer. If you have not received him as your Lord, then by all means, in faith, repeat it. And the Bible says you shall be saved. If you need more information, if maybe you don't have enough to make that decision, then you can definitely reach out to us. Visit our website. We'll be glad to talk to you one on one. We have several ministers, as you can see, at the harvest, and all of them are able to talk and share um, information about uh, the salvation and the kingdom of God. And so we would definitely love to talk to you if you need more information. But if you're not born again and you want to receive him, just simply say, Father, I believe in what Jesus did on the cross. I believe in what the word says. I believe that he died on the cross. He was buried and rose on the third day. And I invite him into my heart. Now, if you said that in faith in Jesus name, Bible says you're, you're saved, you know, that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you that sealed you. OK, and nothing can take you out of his hands. And so we just thank God. If you did give your life to Christ, please let us know that, too, because we, want, we definitely want to pray for you um, and uh, even put a Bible in your hand if you need one. Amen. Amen. Did you have anything you want to say, Pastor? Hey, you, listen, um. As, as one of your pastors, I wasn't going to say anything tonight, but you three ministers tonight, I, I am a person. I'm not easily moved. Um, I don't get excited about a lot of things. I do get excited about his word and to feel the compassion that I heard in you guys voices tonight. And I tell you what, it, it made me feel so good. I had a hard day on the job today. And the hit of compassion coming out of your mouths reminded me why Jesus did what he did and that there is always hope in all of our situations. So you, you, you made your pastor proud tonight. And when you go to bed tonight, go to bed knowing that you made the Heavenly Father proud because he's looking down on each and every one of you. And he's like, wow, well, my kids did it tonight. <laughs> I love y'all. I love you all. Amen. All right, y'all. Well, blessings to you. Y'all have a blessed and prosperous rest of the night. And uh, we will see y'all tomorrow at 7 p.m. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless. All righty. Good night. Good night.